and for the people who didn't attend the class. So now what I, what I want to do, I want to go through the center of area or the centroid. For some of you, this might not be new. And for some of you, it's, it can be new. And for those who heard about it before, today I will do my best to explain it in a way that is um, helpful in the practice. So I, I, I hope that whoever heard it before just like learn something new today. So what I want to do is I do have a T section like this. So this is a steel. And when, it, when I want to look in, in the 3D of this, I will see this uh, T, T plate. I have a thickness and I have a density. So this is a steel. So the whole point here is I want to find the center of, of, of this section. In other words, if I do have, if I do have as if this is the C section, where I will put, for example, this rod underneath it so that it is equilibrium. If I move it, or if I move my hand to the right or to the left, you see that this plate is rotating, right? And this is what we want to do. We want to find the location where I will put the rod underneath it or an axis underneath it so that the rotation or the moment from the right is equal to the moment from the left because that's what caused it to bend, okay? So that's what we want to do today. And, and let's start with doing something, which is, you know what? I want to, for example, in other words, as if like this is the game that you find in the park and I have 10 kilograms here, five kilograms here. I want to find the location where I can put this thing in the middle so that it will be equilibrium. Of course, if I put this in the middle, it is still the 10 kilogram gonna win because now I do have 10, kilogram, 10 kilograms time that distance is larger than five kilograms time that distance. What do you think should I do to make this stable? just to move it towards the 10 kilograms so that what I want to do, I want to increase this distance. So I have now five kilograms times that distance. So I have a big moment here that will be kind of equivalent to that one. That's why, or that's how this is going to be um, stable. So let's start by finding the center of area of that T section. And I, will, and I will go through steps where I will first find an axis where the rotation from the right is equal to rotation of the left in this direction. And I will find another axis that I can put here that makes also the rotation from the right is equal to rotation from the left. In different words, when I put an axis like this, both have the same density, same thickness. So I basically want to find where should I put the axis so that the area on the right is equal to the area on the left. Same as if I put the axis this way, I want to find the location, which is kind of obvious because due to symmetry, the location where the area to the right is equal to the area of the, to the left, okay? When now I have two axes, the intersection of them, what we call it? That's the center of area of, or the centroid, okay? So let's start step by step here. And the first step I told you, I want to find where to put the axis or where I will find eventually the centroid. So I will always have to relate this point or axis related to a reference because I told you, okay, now the centroid is a distance of two and three, for example. Two and three from where? That's why at the beginning we need to define something we call reference axis. In the next couple of slides, I'll tell you how we, like, we put them, but that's the reference that we're gonna use it always to define our points because we need a reference to, to just like tell where our point is. So that's the first thing. Second thing, what I want to do, I want to define, or, or I want to divide this T section to a shapes that is logically known where the center of those shapes is. For example, I do have a T section here. If I made a line like this to divide this T section to two shapes, do you all agree with me now, like these two shapes, logically, we all know where is the center of those, right? Where is the center of shape one? In the middle, right? 
with the center of shape 2 in the middle. So let's put that here and let's just put some dimensions here. So I know that the center here is in the middle and at a distance from y, 1.5. Tell me. Okay, it's it's different problem then. My bad. Okay, this is a different problem. Oh. <laughs> but it's okay, good, good catch, good catch. But it's, it's a different problem, okay? So, I have now 1.5, and what about the center here? Again, all the measurements from the reference that you all assumed from the beginning, and later I'll tell you how we're gonna assume it. But the distance from the Y to the center of shape two is what? That's correct, three plus two, which is equal to five. So let me put it here. Okay, now let's assume a location where we can put one of the centroidal axes in here. So I'll put it, it's gonna be somewhere in here. So I'm gonna put it just as a first assumption here. I'm just gonna put it here. And, the, the re, uh, and since I don't know where that distance is, I'm going to call this distance x. OK? And I will just make it x bar, because now this is the location from the reference to one of the centroidal axes, which is the horizontal distance, or x bar. Again, I don't know where it is. That's why I assume the unknown here. So now let's, let's put everything in, in, in relation to the x bar. If you know that this distance is x bar, and you know that this is 1.5, what is that distance? That's right. So x minus x bar minus 1.5. What about that one? If you know the whole thing is 5, and this distance is x, so what is that? 5 minus x bar, that's correct. So 5 minus x bar. And again, what I want to do, which I explained earlier, that I want to find a location where the moment from the right is equal to the moment to the left, so that this thing is not going to rotate, for example, that way or that way. And I already gave you some weights here. I already told you that this T section made out of steel with a given density and it does have a thickness. Okay? And notice here, this is a very important thing to notice, that everything here is made of one material. So what I'm going to propose now, I'm going to tell you, okay, you know what? Shape 2 has a weight. For example, weight 2. And where is this weight going to be? concentrated in the center of that shape, right? Same as shape one, it's gonna have a weight, and the weight is gonna be concentrated here. So if you wanna imagine this in 3D, I have two weights concentrated here, and I wanna make sure that this force, or this weight, times that distance is equal to that weight times that distance, so that the moments from both sides are equal. And that's how I'm gonna find the centroid, and again, I will do this by having the x bar unknown. Because, so the, 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 the equation here will be only unknown, will only have one unknown, which is x bar. Let me show you. So what I'm, what I'm proposing here, I want to say weight 1 times x bar minus 1.5 is equal to weight 2 times 5 minus x bar. That's what I eventually want. I want the moment to the right is equal to the moment to the left, which is, in different words, if this is the axis that I'm, I'm, I want to find, I want to have the moment from the right is equal to the moment to the left, so that the moment will have the same value. They both opposite direction. They will cancel each other so that that's the axis where it's, where it's stable or where it's symmetric. Not symmetric, like the, the area from the right is equal from, to the area from the left. So let me continue now by just breaking up this equation. I will have x bar 
W1 minus 1.5 W1 is equal to 5 W2 minus X bar W2. Let me put the X bar on one side. So what I have is X bar W1 plus X bar W2 equal to 5 W2 plus 1.5 W1. Is it clear? So let me have the X bar in, like as a common because that's common in this side. So I will have W1 plus W2 is equal to 5W2 plus 1.5W1. And then I will basically divide both sides by W1 plus W2. So I will take this, uh, this guy here. And now I will end up with that equation. OK? But again, this equation is in terms of weights. But what I'm interested in, I want to have this equation or this equation in terms of areas. So let me pause here and and just define what is the weight equal. So if you remember, the weight is equal to mass times gravity, right? And what was the mass equal? So mass or let me, let me put it that way because I memorized that way. Rho, or the density, is equal to mass over volume, which makes the mass equal to rho times volume. OK? So let me substitute back in the weight equation. So weight is equal to mass times gravity. And the mass is equal to rho times volume, then times gravity. And what is the volume equal? Area times thickness, right? Just bear with me. There, there is a point behind this. Area times thickness. So now, I had in this question, I had two weights. I had weight 1, which is equal to rho, which is for the steel, times area 1, times thickness 1, times gravity. And the same thing with weight 2. I had rho steel times area 2 times T2 times gravity. So let me stop the pose and go back to the equation and substitute with those weights in this equation. What you're going to find, you're going to find something interesting. X bar going to be equal to 5 <coughs> rho steel area 2 T2 G and then plus 1.5 and I'm, I'm just, what I'm doing, I'm just removing for example, weight 1 and substituting with that value or with that equation. Rho steel, A1, T1, G over W1 plus W2. So I'm going to just like, I'm going to copy those and put it down here. Did I lose anyone? OK. I told you at the beginning I had two conditions. I told you that the rho for the both material is going to be the same for steel, and the thickness as well is going to be the same. And of course, the gravity for all of them is the same. So do you all agree with me that, can, that I can take a common rho, t, and g at the top, and rho, t, g at the bottom? Do you all agree with me in that? OK, if I did that, they're going to cancel each other. And the rho is going to cancel the T going to cancel and the G going to cancel. And this will leave me with X bar is equal to 5A2 plus 1.5A1 over A1 plus A2. And here is, here is, this is the interest, interesting part, which is if I want to find the centroidal axis, I need to find the area times that distance to the reference plus the area times that distance to the reference over the summation of area, which is if I want to put it in a mathematical way, I'm going to say summation of area 
times x over summation area. And this is how I want to find the horizontal distance to the one of the centroidal axes. Okay? And again, because we're going to use this, like this equation a lot in the moment of inertia, next lecture, and in the bending stresses in the later lecture than the shear stresses, I want you to notice that at the beginning, to cancel everything here, we assume that they have the same thickness and the same material. Because later, when I give you a T-section that has two different material, this equation is no longer valid. So you need to understand the assumption which how we canceled all this together. Because this assumption is this is one material. Again, when you have two material, this doesn't stand. Okay? And also, we have the same thickness, which means when we have a beam and we take a cross section like this, we are assuming that the length in that direction, they're all the same. We don't have a beam that is some of it end in the middle and the other continues. That's the, that's the other assumption where the thickness is equal for all of them. Is that clear? Okay. And the same thing, if I want to find the y bar, it's going to be the same equation, summation area times y over summation of area. So just to make this um, more um, detailed, x bar is equal to summation a times x, which is what you want to say a1 times x1 plus a2 times x2 plus until a n x n. Same as the bottom, a1 plus a2 plus until a n. Because I might give you a shape that has like a, like a shape and then you can divide it to whatever small shapes you want. But to, for all those small shapes, you need to track what is the area of that small shape along with what is the distance from the center of that shape to the reference of the, of, of, of the, of the whole shape that we will assume at the beginning of the problem. Okay? So now, let's continue putting it in a more math way. So x bar is going to equal to, when we say summation area times x, summation means integration, right? And x times d area. And at the bottom, summation of area means integration d area. And I do have a point behind showing you this integration. And of course, and you used to see this in, in the lectures, you're not going to do any integration in the exam or the homework. The whole point of the integration is just like explain to you the theory. Okay? So when we take an integration of area times a distance, I want to like, remind you something. What we used to call force times distance? Anyone? So when we have a force multiplied by a distance, what will that generate? Moment, Moment or torque, right? Same thing. If I have an area times a distance, we call it a moment area. So a moment here is because something times a distance. So we call this part at the beginning, what we saw here, this is what we call moment of area. And we're going to call it first moment of area, and we're going to explain that in a moment. And the first moment of area, which is the numerator part has a name or has a symbol, we call it SY. I know that the symbol is confusing here because we are taking integration of X and why you are calling it SY. I'm going to explain that in a moment. But this is what we call it for the first moment of area. And then I do have integration Y DA, which is this guy. And it's going to be equal to Sx. So what does Sx mean? So whenever you see integration y dA, the first moment of area here tells us how the area is, distrib is distributed away from the axis. In different words, if I do have two triangles here, and the distance y from the center of that triangle to x is that distance, and when I just flipped it or rotated it, I have a small distance. The first moment of area tells you the area 
times the distance. Which one of them you think gonna be have high first moment of area, given that both of them have the same area? So remember, first moment of area is area times y. So which one of them will give me a higher first moment of area? The first one. And what I want you to understand from here, that first moment of area indicates how the area is distributed away from the axis that you are talking about. So here we are talking about summation y d area. We are talking, that's why we call it Sx. So the distribution of area around Sx, around x, we need to take the distance y. Do you all now understand the symbol? Again, what does that tell me? We all agreed from the previous lecture, the further we put the material, the stiffer the material, right? And you all seen it in examples like T sections. The reason why we put the material away from the center is that we want to make it stiffer. So this tells me how the area is distributed away from the axis. But here is the thing. We use the first moment of area, an application for this is we use it to tell us where the centroid is. Because we use it in the centroid equation, right? So now if I told you the center of the first moment of area of this shape about the x-axis is this y, what if I put the x-axis at the centroid? What will be the first moment of area now? Anyone? I heard zero. Anyone agrees or disagrees with him? OK. Again, if I told you what is the first moment of area about axis, you want to find the area and multiply it by the distance from the center of that shape to the axis that I'm talking about. But what if the axis that I'm talking about is a centroidal axis? What if the axis is here? What if the axis is here? What is the y you're going to multiply it with? Zero. zero. That's why whenever you have a first moment of area that equals to zero, that means this axis that you're talking about, or where we are studying, is the centroidal axis. So the further the centroidal axis from the center of the shape, or the further the axis that you're talking about, away from the center of shape, the higher the first moment of area. So here is the only application or one of the application of the first moment of area to tell us where the centroid is. Or, uh, like, if I have a big number, that means the axis of the centroid of the, sh like, axis between the center, or the distance between the centroid of the shape to the axis that you are finding the first moment of area about, how far they are. But here comes the thing. I told you in a moment that the further the distance, the, st the, further the, the further the area from the axis, the higher, the, st uh, the stiffer the material. But the first moment of area, which I'm going to explain in a moment, cannot track that 100%. And I'm going to show you that in a moment. But before this, I want to do, I want to explain how we find x bar in terms of integration way. And again, I'm doing this integration once just to show you how we do integration. Because in case you want to, like, to do the integration sometime in the future, then I taught you this. You all know that the centroid of this rectangle from kindergarten, it is, if I have a rectangle that is b, you all know it's b over 2. And the horizontal distance to the centroid is a over 2. That's clear. That's like kindergarten 1 or 2, right? OK, let's, let's prove it now. OK, I know it's silly, but it's a prove it just to show you how we do the integration. So we know the answer. So the integration shouldn't be that hard. So if I want to find the horizontal distance or the horizontal distance to the centroid, what I will say, integration x d area over integration d area. And again, this is the only time you will see integration. I'll not ask you to do any integrations, just for your knowledge. Integration x, or let, let, let's not do the x. Let me do the y, and the x is going to follow. OK? 
When we take integration of y, that means we have a strip like this. And this strip, the like the, the, the horizontal, like the horizontal dimension is a, the vertical dimension is dy, and then this is the y distance from the from that strip to the axis. And again, you understand how the integration works. This strip gonna move from the integration limit. So this area gonna move up and down just to sum this area. And so the limit of integration here, what, what do you all see? So this is gonna move like this. So what's the limit of that integration? Zero to B. So I want to find from zero to B up and zero to B bottom. And then the integration, I just wanna break this up. Why? What is the D area here equal? What is the area of that strip? It is A times dy. Do you all see it? OK, let me put that back. A dy. And here, just integration. A dy from 0 to b. A here is constant, so I will take it out. And I will just integrate in terms of y. So integration of y. Also, that was kindergarten three, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Integration of y is y squared over two, right? We add a power by one and divide by the new power. And the integration down here is going to be y, because if we integrate nothing or we integrate a constant, that's a y. The limit of integration here is from 0 to b and down here from 0 to b. What I will end up, I will end up with b squared at the top, and I will end up with b at the bottom, b a. Cancel the a with the a, and b with the b, and here you are. That's the b over 2 that we all know from logic with the center here. So I'm not going to do this integration for all the shapes, but I want you to know that we do have a table, and this table has all the shapes. And I just showed you how we can do the integration for one shape. You can do the integration for all of them. But while I'm interested in this class, I'm interested in rectangle, square, and circle. So that's what I'm interested in. And the reason why we do have this table, because if I, get, if I gave you a complicated shape, I want you to divide that shape to a very small areas that you, can, uh, that you know where the center of that area is. OK? Is that clear? Any questions so far? Anyone? Okay. One last integration. And again, when I do the integration, I do have, I do have a point. What happened if I do have this rectangle, and I told you instead of putting the axes in the center, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sorry, instead of putting the axis at the left, I'm gonna put it in the center. Okay? Let's do this because I do have like two main conclusions behind doing this. So now, instead of doing, instead of doing y bar, I'm gonna do x bar. Okay? And x bar means I'm taking a strip like this. that has a vertical distance, or vertical, sorry, dimension is 2, and the horizontal dimension is dx, and that distance is x, OK? So let's do one last time an integration here. Integration x d area, which is going to be equal to integration x the d area here is 2 times dx. And the limit of the integration is from negative 2 to 2. I want the strip to go from the left to the right. So from negative 2 to 2. And at the bottom here, I do have d area. I'm not interested in the bottom. 
I'm interested in, in what's, what's in the top here. So again, integration, I'll take this two out. And integration x dx, it is going to be 2 x squared over 2. And the limit of that integration is from negative 2 to 2. This 2 can cancel each other. And then 2 squared, which is 4, minus negative 2 squared, which is also 4, what I'm getting? 0. So the x bar here is 0. And does that make sense? I need a, like an explanation. Someone explain to me why does that make sense? I just explained that like three or four minutes ago. That's right. That's right. There is no distance. Or in other words, the re for every strip here, for every strip here that has a distance, for example, B, I do have another area here that does have an, a distance negative V. That's why for all strep here that has a distance B, there is another area from the other side, other strep, that's negative. That's why they cancel each other. And if they all cancel each other, that means we are on the centroid. We are at the centroid. OK? So from now on, whenever I, I tell you if, what is the first moment of area around y bar, which is an integration of y bar d area. And I intentionally would the y, y bar here because we want to find the first moment of area around the y bar. If we want to find the first moment of area around y bar, what is going to be equal? It's going to be 0. But if I want to find sy around like any y axis, that's integration y d area, it's going to have a value. Tell me. You are right. I am until now getting confused with it. And I was advising you to be confused. I'm, I'm the one who's confused. But I'm, I'm happy that you noticed this. Is that clear? So let's now appreciate something, which is like, let's now go to the first step of how we identify our reference axes. I want you to always identify the reference axes or the, your origin at the bottom left of the shape. And the reason why I want to put the reference axis here at the bottom left, that I want to make the whole shape in the first quadrant so that I will not be able, I will not like have to deal with any negative distance, like what you saw in this conclusion. So if I put the axis in the middle here, of course here I put it in the centroid just to show you it's equal to 0. But imagine I just shifted away from the centroid. It's gonna, the first moment of area going to have the value, but you will end up e dealing with negative distances. So the point of make it easy for you and for everyone, we want to put our reference axis at the bottom left of the shape so that the whole shape is in the first positive quadrant. OK? Does that mean that you can't put the, 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 the reference anywhere here? No, you can put it, but like, that doesn't make any sense. That's not going to lead you to any way. So always put it in a way that make it as a first quadrant. So the second shape is a little bit challenging. What do you think? Where should I put the reference axis? OK, let's start with x. So the x is going to be at the bottom here, just to make it all positive, like in terms of y. What about d? What about where should I put the y? Should I put here? No. Here, right? So now, I hope you understood this part. What about this one, this i section? Again, it's going to be here, and this guy going to be here. OK? The last L section is going to be here. And let me get back to here and introduce one of the concepts that we're going to explain later, which is I told you that the further the area from the centroid, the stiffer. S, S, the first moment of area cannot track that because if we have, the cent if we have a centroidal axis here, the area to the right now is equal to the area of the left. So the, centroid, the, cent the first moment of area not going to give me any, it's going to give me 0. 
So zero doesn't integrate the stiff, how the stiff the, the shape is. That's why any suggestions of how to eliminate the negatives? Okay, but now I'm interested in, in having the axis on the centroid. So if I have this, I don't have it. If I do have this wallet, and you know the, the, the centroid is in the middle, and I want to find how it's going to bend out the centroid, it does have a stiffness, uh, like the, sh the shape is stiffness. So around the centroid is going to rotate, for example, some way. And now it shows some resistance, which tells me that the first moment of area doesn't detect how stiff the shape is. So what I'm proposing here is, what if I'm squaring the y? What if I'm squaring the y? What's that? So do you all agree with me? If I squared the y, which is the distance from the strap to the, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm now uh, squaring the x. So the distance here, I'm going to have positive distance. So the area multiplied the distance, that's going to tell me how far the area from the centroid, and that's going to tell me how stiff the shape is, not the material. OK? Which is an introduction to something we're going to take later. It is the second moment of area, which is ix is equal to integration. And instead of y, the area, I will have y squared, the area. And same as iy, integration x squared, the area. So the reason why we call this first moment of area, that the distance here is to the power 1. That's why it's called the first moment of area. And here, we all know the area times the distance. That's some sort of an indication of how stiff the shape is. Because again, you all agree with me, the further I put the material from the axis, the stronger the material is. And let me show you an example. You're going to play with this concept that, for example, in bridges, why do I keep the, this thing in the middle hollow? Because it's not going to affect me. And instead, I'm going to take this out. I'm, I'm just going to distribute the areas away from the center. OK? So the first moment of area cannot track that, because if I want to find the moment of inertia about the centroid, the first moment of area is going to be 0, because the shape area to the top is equal to area to the bottom. But if I squared them now, now this will be a good indication of how stiff the shape is. And we can play around with that. And there is. Uh, as I'm going to show in the next lecture, there is a lot of application to this. But I hope you all understood this part. So there is a difference between first moment of area and second moment of area. First moment of area tells me or detect where the centroid is. The second moment of area, it is accurately telling me how stiff the shape is, not the material, the shape. And the reason why I'm always saying not the material because at the beginning, I canceled all the material to each other, assuming that everything has the same material. OK? Now, let's now do an example. And if I gave you a shape like this, which is, again, you used to, the first step, which I obviously did it for you, detect the reference axes, OK? Which is to be the origin going to be to the bottom left so that the shape in the first quadrant. Second step is to divide the shape into known shapes, which is rectangles, circles, triangles, and bless you, and get their distances from their centroid to the axis. What I mean here is I want to, first of all, divide this shape to, I, I can't deal with T section. I don't know where the center of that T section is. That's why I need to divide it to two rectangles. And when I divide the two rectangles, you need to name them. So, and I didn't write here, and name them. The top rectangle here is going to be area 1. The bottom rectangle here is going to be area 2. OK? What is the distance from the centroid of that shape 
to the reference. I need you to differentiate between two things. There is a difference between the centroid of this shape and the centroid of the whole shape, okay? To get the centroid of the whole shape, we're gonna use the equation using the area and the center of each shape. So now, if I want to find the center or the centroid, centroidal distance of shape one, for example, I'm gonna have, in the books and elsewhere, you're gonna find it like you can use tables, but I don't prefer using the table. I want you to use everything graphically because it doesn't show you everything. And, and I, I do have a point behind this, but let's continue. So the y distance from shape one, what do you all think? 8.5. And then let me call this y1, which is equal to 8.5. And x1 is equal to what? Equal to 6. What about shape 2? What is y, y, what's y2? 4. What is x2? That's correct. Now, just substituting the equation, which tells us if I want to find the horizontal distance to the centroidal axis, I will say x bar is equal to summation area times x over summation area, which means I do have two areas here, area 1, x1, plus area 2, x2, over area 1 plus area 2. What, what is that equal? What is area 1? 12 times 1. What is x1? x1 is equal to 6. Okay, what about area 2? Yeah, quickly, tell me, tell me. No, no, like tell me the whole equation. So area 2 times x2, x2 what's area 2? 8 times 0 0.5 times what? Times 6. Over the area, which is simply, you're going to take like this first part, 12, 12 times 1 plus 8 times 0 0.5. If you solve for this, you're obviously going to get x equal to what? Without calculation. Where do you think the horizontal distance to the, hor hor to the, to the centroidal y-axis? Where do you think? At x equal to what? Without calculating. At equal equals 6. Because if you notice, if you notice a, a symmetry here, so let me put x inches. If you notice the symmetry here, you can save yourself a whole step and tell me, x bar is equal to 6 inches due to symmetry. Do you all see it? Any questions? Okay. Same way, I'm going to do y bar. Summation area times y over summation area. Come on, quickly tell me what's, what is the values here. So area 1 times 1, 1. What's area 1? 12 times what? Yeah, 8.5 times 1, right? Plus, area 2, what's area 2? 8 times 0 0.5 times 4, right? Summation of area, which is 12 times 1, plus 8 times 0 0.5. If you solve this, you're going to get 7.375 inches. And after this, I want you now to know, OK, now I found the centroid of this whole shape, which is x bar comma y bar is equal to 6 inches and 7.375 inches. And I want you to draw, because the shape now is already full with dimensions, I want you to draw another shape, which is what I'm basically doing. I'm just going to. Eh. I'm going to copy this. Let's see if, if I took it. Yeah, I took everything. OK. So I want you to now put, to draw an, like a same shape, and just put here in the middle that, OK, I do have now this axis that I'm drawing. They are the x dash y dash, which is those are the centroidal axes. Centroidal axes mean they pass through the centroid of the shape. 
what is their what is like their location this is y this is x so this location here the vertical distance to that x axis is 7.375 and the horizontal distance here is 6 inches was it easy all good any questions so of course I didn't have time to go through moment of inertia which I'm gonna explain it next lecture so in the in-class assignment we're just gonna practice using this first the first moment of area and the centroid and you're gonna find in, in the in-class their question related to moment of inertia so tomorrow we are just gonna not cancel them we are just gonna postpone them until Monday or until Tuesday next next week okay any questions all good okay see you tomorrow <laughs>